Hello and welcome to News Click. US President Donald Trump is on his maiden visit to India from the 24th to 25th of February. It's a short visit of 36 hours, but it's high on optics. And he's likely to sign a series of deals with India on trade, on defense. But it looks like, given latest reports, that the trade deal is off the agenda. But the defense deal is on. And a lot of analysts think that uh, it's a good thing that the trade deal is off because there were too many tensions. And the sort of defense deal being part of the agenda shows a continuity in the strategic partnership. So to break down the defense deal, we have with us D. Raghunandan from the Delhi Science Forum. Raghu, welcome to News Click. But before we go into the details of the deal, um, I mean, to just to put things in context, you know, it's you know, argued that the U.S. is a declining power economically. You see it with its sort of recalibration on trade policy. It's pulled out of uh, many trade deals. It's, you know, running the WTO down. But it is still seen as the preeminent military power. And in that context, how important are foreign sort of defense deals in sort of U.S. foreign policy influence? And Yeah, well... Um we need to look at this both from a general U.S. policy point of view and U.S. policy under Trump point of view, which I think are quite different. Uh, in the pre-Trump era, the U.S. was really interested in projecting power in different parts of the world, in making alliances so as to act as force multiplier for U.S. influence and reach. Mm -hmm. uh, Trump's foreign policy is very different. He's not interested in alliances. He's not interested in uh, military extensions far beyond the U.S. borders. For him, it's about money. So he's in India looking for Indian purchase of military equipment, and the more the better. Uh, as far as the U.S. influence is concerned, India would, of course, look at this from a longer-term perspective. Trump is, after all, a transitional figure. At the most, he's going to be around for another four years. And India wants to cultivate the United States for a longer-term uh, strategic and defense partnership and will be viewing at defense acquisitions from that point of view. Okay. And the defense partnership for the last decade or so has been on an upward sort yep. of trajectory. You've, uh, I mean, seen India as one of the biggest arm purchases from the U.S., um, it signed a lot of agreements on logistics exchange. There are these military exercises. Yeah. There's a communications and security agreement. Uh, can you put this sort of the defense partnership in perspective in terms of what it means for India as yeah. well, added to the U.S.? Uh, in the broader picture, uh, the U.S. is looking for a strong military partner in the Indian Ocean and the southern uh, oceans area, mm -hmm. uh, particularly with a view to containing China's uh, growing influence and spread in this region, and was looking to India to partner the US in this uh, effort, joining with Australia, perhaps with Japan, uh, extending that uh, alliance, etc. From the Indian point of view, India is looking for a powerful ally uh, in the U.S., India is engaged in diversifying its uh, defense acquisitions away from an over-reliance on Russian uh, arms. And India had long been looking for an opening to acquire uh, specialized defense equipment from the U.S., but which was not open until the Indo-U.S. nuclear deal mm -hmm. uh, was struck because India's nuclear posture was an obstacle from an American legal uh, and strategic point of view. Now that that's been opened, you see, in a sense, the floodgates opening a bit uh, as far as Indian acquisitions of U.S. military equipment uh, is concerned. But again, as I said, under Trump, you will perhaps not see this Indo-US military uh, engagement and relationship going very far. Mm -hmm. Because as I said, Trump is not particularly interested in that aspect. India is looking to expand its presence in this uh, region. But I think you would understand, as we have discussed earlier uh, in NewsClick, India is currently hampered 
by a lack of funds mm -hmm. to invest in the kind of equipment they would need for a greater outreach capability in the Indian Ocean region. And linked to that, reports indicate that it's quite a small deal in terms of the amount of uh, equipment involved, yep. money as well. And it's been a deal that's been long pending. So can you just take us through yeah. the nitty gritties of yeah. the deal itself? Uh, What's on the table? So uh, I think it's important for us to uh, look at what's on the table as well as what's off the table. Uh, what's on the table now is acquisition of a few helicopters uh, for the Indian Navy. Uh, the Indian Navy has been uh, short of helicopters on its uh, various battleship uh, uh, platforms uh, and has been looking for acquisitions uh, for several years. It had shortlisted uh, a few and from among them had identified the American Seahawk uh, SH-40, the Sikorsky range of uh, helicopters, uh, for quite some time. But negotiations had earlier broken, broken down over prices. Mm -hmm. uh, now there's a reconsideration and now India thinks it has got what it wants. So that's one purchase, but then we must keep in mind this is it sounds big because it's two point odd billion dollars, but it's only 24 helicopters uh, that we are looking at. They are very good helicopters, powerful, equipped with radar, avionics, etc., which will add to uh, the naval capability uh, in helicopters. The other acquisition that India was looking at from this visit is a missile defense uh, system for the capital around Delhi which currently uses a Russian uh, missile defense uh, system, which is somewhat old and uh, perhaps not uh, up to requirement in the current circumstances. Uh, so India was looking to the US missile system, but I think that's a deal that's not going to get struck mm -hmm. while Mr. Trump is here, because India has been uh, expressing its concern over the very high price tag. Uh, currently, the U.S. is asking for something like $1.9 billion uh, on this. India expects the price to be at a billion dollars or less. So that's a big gap mm -hmm. uh, in prices. So I think that's going to be, you may have an expression of interest or an MOU signing pending price negotiations, which will then uh, fructify later. Trump will definitely come and push for the 114 fighter aircraft uh, deal, uh, which came up in India after the Rafale deal was wound down from 126 to 36 uh, aircraft. But all indications are from the within the Indian defense establishment that that 114 fighter deal is perhaps likely to go off the shelf uh, for now. India is quite likely to acquire an additional bunch of Rafale aircraft in which case this 114 fighter deal, I think, may not fructify at all. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a very um, uh, restricted military deal, but enough for, I think, Trump to go back to the US and say, well, I've come back with a good deal. I've got so many billion dollars uh, out of this and more to come. So clearly, as you underline, it's a minor deal. But um, in terms of conclusions, I just want to get you to put this in context of you know, Modi's uh, big make in India strategy, which yeah. includes a strong sort of de de defense component yeah. as well. Yeah. And in terms of do any of these deals have domestic manufacturing, no. No. transfer of technology? Uh, in fact, that is uh, what is notable about all the defense deals India has struck with the US. Uh, all Indian acquisitions from the US have been specialized US military equipment in necessarily small numbers, because they are specialized equipment. You don't require them in the hundreds or the thousands. Uh, you require a few of them, but they are powerful weapons or they are force multipliers, like maritime reconnaissance aircraft, the P-8I uh, series of uh, uh, maritime reconnaissance, which uh, India has acquired from the US, a couple of ships that India has acquired. Uh, a few specialized helicopters, the Apache helicopters, the Chinook helicopters, and now the Seahawk, 
all these are in numbers like 20, 25, 30. Mm -hmm. So at scales of that nature, none of them lend themselves to uh, transfer of technology, manufacturing in India, and so on, which in any case is really outside the purview of most US military sales uh, abroad. The US is not famous for sharing technologies, is not famous for co-production, and even with its closest allies in NATO or with Japan, there's only minor amounts of sub-assembly that take place in these uh, countries. Uh, so uh, even if India goes in for broader acquisitions from the US, the chances of that involving transfer of technology are, I think, very remote. Mm -hmm. Um, and as far as Make in India, therefore, is concerned, I don't think any of these U.S. acquisitions link up with that. There was some talk in this uh, in the earlier 126 aircraft deal, which Rafal finally uh, won, and now in the maybe on, maybe off 114 aircraft deal, that F-16 or something could shift their production line to India because they are closing down in the U.S. If that happens, and that's a remote if, then there could be some boost to uh, the Make in India program, otherwise not. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Raghu, for underlining that, you know, irrespective of the optics that you see in the media and from both leaders, it is really a small deal and sort of laying it within the context of Make in India. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching NewsClick. We'll be back with more analysis post the Trump visit.